Now, although I haven't hit stage 60 in Coda's Great Adventure, I know what stage 60 is. I'm going to give you the best strategy going from 1 to 59, all to prepare for stage 60. I highly recommend do not ignore this event. The rewards are spectacular. If you end up liking this video, hit the sub button, hit the like button, hit that bell, ding a ding a thing, so you know when I post a video. Let's go, baby. All right, Coda Survivors. If you know this genre, it's just like Vampire Survivor, Deep Rock Survivor, Toe for Smurf, what up? But I'm gonna tell you the best cards to use, and this will help you practice for stage 60. Because stage 60 is a hellstorm. There's a million things you gotta dodge for. But these tips alone are gonna help you tremendously. Enhancing equipment, you will want to max this out at some point. Once you're going up the stages, all the stages that you've completed previously, you can quick adventure. You will want to shoot for the materials that you actually need, which are down behind me. You do get more if you do it manually, but this takes up a ton of time, so you might just want a quick adventure. So by stage 60, you definitely want to max these out. Well, how do you get more tickets to enter? Tickets are in the shop. You get five free a day. You can spend crystals on these packs to get you A, 20 tickets, or B, 60 tickets. The 60 tickets with the 300,000 Sky Stones is what I would prefer you to get, because the other one is just gold. You do get the same amount of tickets as you would in Crystal Wise in each pack. Is the event worth the crystals? Why would I want to enter more and spend crystals? Yes, completely worth it. First of all, playing Coda's Great Adventure five times gets you one Coda box, which I did it recently ten times, I got two. Now you can't see the whole list here, but you get scrolls, devil mons, light and dark scrolls, transcendent scroll, legendary scrolls, artifact summons. You get tons of rewards. You can check out Farmer's video too, I'm pretty sure he did the calculation of crystal worth or whatever. Mathematics gross. But it's definitely worth it, plus all the magic power stars you get for this Magic Tech gift box. This event has a ton of great rewards, including refining catalysts. And as you go down the board, even more rewards. This event is definitely worth. And as far as the minigame, the more you enhance your character, the more stages you clear, the more you enhance your equipment. You will be getting rewards. Crystals, scrolls, artifacts, summons, light and darks, etc, etc. I know some of you may think it's boring. It gets more exciting the farther you go, because it gets harder. Giggity. Now there's videos out there of the AFK strat, which, well, it's, it's boring. You stand in a corner, but you can't do that on stage 60, at least for the bosses. I'm going to show you a different way, plus prepare you for the end game. The best cards and how to maximize those cards quickly. First of all, you definitely want to prioritize quickly filling up all six slots of your weapons and your passives. The weapon slots are orange, the passives are purple. Doing so will remove all of the cards you do not want to show up and only show you the cards that you have. Let's do a stage just as an example. I'll go over the priority of cards at the end. The starting skill should definitely be something to help you super early, but prioritize for late game. Let's start out with Forest Warning. The longer they're in there, it does a ton of damage as you can see. Now the next skill, I could upgrade that, but again, you want to fill out all of the slots as quickly as possible. This will eliminate getting cards you don't want. Next, we're going to go with Wheel of Flame. This is hugely important because you don't have to aim it, and when you're running around dodging crap, this will hit the boss if he's alone. And like I said, prioritize purples. Hard Safety Helmet is one of the purples you are definitely going to want to get. Next, Sledgehammer. Sledgehammer is highly important. It increases the attack range of skills. The radius that the Roots and Wheel of Flame take are huge when you max this out. Now, all these cards are random when they come to you, so you might not get the perfect, perfect build. Let's go ahead and get the high quality Ragma Stone, hugely important, especially for Wheel of Flame. I could get another card in Sledgehammer, however, we gotta max out those slots first. Winged Shoe is another card to get. Another weapon skill is Landmine. You definitely want to pick that up. The boss will run over these a ton. 
There may come to a point early game where you have to upgrade one of the weapons or passives you have. Because even though Protection of Ruin is actually good, when you get to stage 60 and there's a million things shooting at you, this is just one less thing that messes with your mind and your eyes. Let's go ahead and get the high quality Ragma Stone again, because the attack will be increased for all of your skills. Now here's three new cards. Out of these three, Crab Kimbap Lunchbox is the best. Because if you ever do get hit, you can run away and heal up. All right, here we go again. No new card to apply to my weapons or passives. All right, here's another time where we're going to upgrade Wheel of Flame. I'm looking for one specific passive. All right, there's Ice Field, Magna Gloves, but I'm going to go with Hard Safety Helmet. I'm not getting the cards yet to max out the weapons and passives. Here's the last passive I'm looking for, and it's Long Lasting Battery. This will increase the duration of Roots. Now, the one thing I don't have is the Skill Cooldown Passive which I would actually put in place of the skill duration passive. Skill cooldown is extremely important, and in this run, I was not able to get that. But the skill duration one is kind of like, it's yin and yang, but skill cooldown is a priority over duration. So now I have all my passives, so the only passives that will show up are the ones I have. Here is one of the weapon skills that I wanted to get, preferably in the beginning of the match. It's not going to help you for the end game. That's rotating slash. You only need one star level of it. It's just to max out the weapon slots. You could go the arrows here, but early game slash is better. Whenever you run into a situation where you could upgrade two cards, always go for the one that'll get you a higher star level. Because once you max that out, then it'll start prioritizing other cards. All right, there's one of the last weapons I was looking for, and that's Guided Bomb. Guided Bomb can hit from a far distance. It's not big damage, but it's passive damage while you're dodging a million things. I would highly prioritize defense over attack, because those orbs flying around the map hit hard. And lastly, finally, I get my last weapon slot, and it's Shooting Star. Shooting Star at max level, max attack, hits like a champ. It is random where it goes. There's multiple stars shooting out, and one or two may hit the boss when you're dodging a million things. So I have all my weapon slots filled, I have all my passives filled. At the two minute mark, this is huge, because now for the next three minutes, I'm going to be able to max out these cards that I have. Now is the time to upgrade all your cards. We got Landmine, the Attack one, and Sledgehammer. Let's go for the attack. But like I said, the rotating slash weapon slot, it's just a filler, just to completely fill out the weapon slots. Don't upgrade rotating slash. Out of hard safety helmet, guided bomb, and battery. Like I said, defense is highly important. Even if long lasting battery is one out of the max, pick the defense. Now these are all three prioritized skills. Ragma Stone will upgrade all weapons. So get attack passive first. Here we go again. Defense is now maxed out. Perfect. Sledgehammer just makes the roots so much bigger, it's crazy. The landmines are bigger. You don't want to really worry about putting damage on the boss. You kind of want it to be passive while you're dodging stuff. Here's an example of craziness, tons of red orbs, and you kind of really just want to focus on dodging, but staying at a good distance from the boss, kind of getting him to run over your landmines but really just focusing on dodging red orbs. And the defense helps when you do get hit by an orb like this. The shooting stars randomly will miss and then they randomly will hit the boss sometimes. It just depends. But you got the passive heal over time as well. He's running over roots, he's running over landmines, he's getting hit by wheel flame. I do wish I had my skill cooldowns here, but that's all right. Like I said, you won't get perfect card choices all the time. Here's a boss with lots and lots of orbs, but this is nothing compared to stage 60. But at least with this way, you can kind of just focus on dodging. The shooting stars do hit him as well. It's sometimes even one to three of them. But yeah, this is just a small example. I can't wait to get to stage 60 and do a video on it. A lot of people think it's super, super crazy and impossible. I'm gonna get it done for you, watch. But the best cards to prioritize, in my opinion, for passives, defense, heal over time, skill cooldown, or the duration one if you can't get the skill cooldown to pop up, the attack passive, and then one or two points into movement speed. Now for weapon slots, the wheel of flame, the forest root, don't hate me on names, I don't know the names, landmines, 
shooting star, guided bomb, and lastly, it can either be rotating slash or arrows, whatever you prefer. Follow this strategy and you'll be ready for stage 60. That's it for today's video. I'm going to push my way up to 60, hopefully get that video out for you. If you end up liking this video, sub, like, ding, ding, bell. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.